preparing me. You're preparing me for the kingdom to not only to lead, but to lead by example. So I don't want to wear a, a garment <coughs> that has wool and shackness because I've, I've got to buy... Uh, I've got to buy a garment that someone had to kill uh, a, a sheep or an animal with ethical questions and ethical morality involved, and that is a misrepresentation of Eden restored, paradise restored, the millennial kingdom to inherit. It's a distortion of what you and I are going to enter in the kingdom. It's a distortion. <coughs> all his ways are pleasant, yeah. and all his paths yeah. are peace. Yeah. What seems to be the most illogical misunderstood verses that have no modern day application to the 20th century man actually are some of the deeper things of the kingdom. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Turn your neighbor and say deeper things. Deeper things. In the back, wake up someone that's sleeping. <laughs> Please wake someone up and go, deeper things. <laughs> Thank you. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. No, you don't sleep in the back. I know, just the middle, just the middle rows. <laughs> You show Yahoo 11, 4 through 9. You're right, sister. I got my, my on fire, my on fire group in the back. Okay, you show Yahoo 11. Watch this, watch this. A child leads them. Watch this. Verse 7, you show Yahoo 11, 7. A cow and bear shall feed together. This is why shotness is not a, a, a rule for now. It is a practice and a preparation and a, and, a, and, a, and, a, and a foreshadow of the glorious kingdom. And the church just can't seem to get it straight. Why am I always preaching at the church? Because most of my Israelite brothers are there by the hundreds of millions. They're there. How are they going to get out if they don't respond to the truth if they can't hear the truth? I love those people. I have nothing against those people. Who do you think the ones who support my ministry? Who are the ones who pay my salary? They are. They come with tears. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The Jews don't support my ministry. Christians do. But they have hunger for the truth, hungry enough to come out and be thankful for what they're being, what they're being taught. Hallelujah. Are you with me? Yes. So this is a Torah that is a, a, a lesson. Watch this. For the day when the cow and the bear feed together. Oh, what a day. What a day that will be. When the cow and the bear shall feed together. The young ones lie down together, meaning they get along. And every time you and I wear shotnakes and violate shotnakes, we're saying to Yahweh, Yahweh, your kingdom isn't coming. Your will will not be done on earth as it is in heaven. We are actually, they can't, I mean, Colossians 2.16 says what? He says that, that, that the Torah is a foreshadow of things to come. The pastor says, no, we're not under the law because whenever we do these hukim and mishpatim, we're going back under the law. Rav Shaul, the apostle Paul says, no, when you do these things, you're looking forward. There are shadows of things to come. The, the Greco-Roman system says, no, you're going back. Paul says, no, you're going forward. The church says, no, you're going back. Paul says, no, you're going forward. So these are the instructions to propel you and prepare you to go forward, somebody. Amen. Are you with me? Yes. Amen. Are we on? Yes. We're rolling. 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 Rolling to the kingdom. No shot names. No shot names. No shot names. No. No. And the nursing child shall play. Look at this, verse 8. And the, I'm sorry, look, look at the end of verse 7. The cow and bear shall feed. Their young ones shall lie down. A lion will eat straw like an ox. What's going to happen? Yahweh is going to turn the carnivores into herbivores. Right. Yahweh is going to turn the carnivores into herbivores. Right now, a human being goes in the forest, but he's worried about a snake. Right now, a human being goes in the forest, but he's worried about an animal of prey. Right now, a human being is scared to be alone in the wilderness, for we know out in the wilderness there are animals who wish us harm. But in that day, in that day, he takes the lion and the predator and, and the cobra, and he turns these carnivores into herbivores. Turn to your neighbor and say, Herb a vor. Herb a vor. If you can't remember what that means, it just 
First name Her, middle initial A, Vor. Maybe. The kingdom is going to be full of herbivores. Maybe. <laughs> so if they will not harm each other, they will not harm you, Ted. Those animals will not harm you because they don't harm each other. So why are you harming them now? When you harm them now and shed blood and violate shotnets, Yahweh, now it's true. There are other animal skins that we wear, and, and I understand that, and Yahweh understands that, but he's teaching us the higher level, the higher lesson, getting us ready. I'm not condemning people who wear animal skins, who wear mink coats. I'm not, that's not the purpose of the message. That's not the point of the message. That's not the whole, that's not the, the, the word that Yahweh has for us today. The word is that think carefully what you do for in the kingdom there will be no blood shed and there will be no death and destruction and destruction in all my holy mountain. Says yeah. Yahweh. Yeah. Are you with me? Yes. And by not violating shot names, we take the higher road, don't we? I'm not condemning anyone who, who wears who wears animal skins or so forth, or has pocketbooks made from, you know, crocodile skin. I'm not condemning anybody. I'm saying to you, when we follow this particular hook, Yahweh always reminds us of the higher road, doesn't he? And he prepares us for the higher road to inherit the kingdom. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Now look. Oh, I love this. Look at verse 8. The nursing child, that's you and I, shall play by the cobra's hole. And the weaned child, those we instruct in the kingdom, shall put his hands in the adder's den. They do, now watch this, verse 9. They do no evil or destruction in all my set-apart mountain. For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of Yahweh as waters cover the sea. So if in that day there's no death and destruction and no bloodshed of man or animal, it is because the earth is full of the knowledge of Yahweh. So this hook is to bring the fullness of the knowledge of Yahweh now because we'll, the earth will be filled with that knowledge then, so we need the hoop now to prepare us for that day when the earth will be full of the knowledge of Yahweh, even as the water covers the sea. And so by observing this hook that makes no sense in the natural, it is a preparation to get the same fullness and spirit and knowledge of Yahweh now. Why wait when we can have it? Hallelujah. We can have it now. Oh, you got to jump up. Why? Why wait when we can have it now? I mean, I Yahweh wait. says, I'm a, the same knowledge is going to cover the earth like the waters cover the sea. You could have that covering your every move, your every step, your every direction, your every, every, every path you take now, today, here in Israel. Think of the grace of Yahweh. There's the grace of the Torah. Amen. That's the grace of the Torah. Amen. It gives you the same knowledge that will be present in the kingdom in the here and now. I want it now. Why wait? Turn to everyone and say, why wait? No need to wait. By observing the laws of shotness now, we get the same knowledge that is going to fill the earth, filling our vessel. For we are the temple of Elohim. For it is written, Elohim will dwell in them and walk in them and be in them. Hallelujah, somebody. Why wait? The goodness of Yahweh wants you to have the same knowledge that's going to cover the earth as the waters fill the earth then. So then we see this, the Torah is grace. This hook is all about chesed. That's chesed, is it not, Tia? Yes, sir. That's chesed. Chesed. <laughs> if Yahweh is going to allow you to have the same knowledge now that you are going to have then, whoa. Maybe I better reconsider this shot in this thing. And if I have any wool and linen garments in my closet, I'm going to give them to the Salvation Army. I'm going to give them to the Booth Boys. Maybe I won't, because I don't want them to get messed up in rehearsal either. So maybe I'll just discard it. Because I don't want to mess up their rehearsal. That's better. Bonfire. Are you with me? Baruch Hashem Yom. Yes. Now don't miss this now. Some of y'all getting itchy and thinking about food. Now stay still because the punchline, the best is, is, is yet to come as we bring this thing in for a life. Come on! Everyone enjoy. Yeah. 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 I'll tell you what, if that's not grace, here's the grace of the Torah. Yahweh says don't mix wool and linen. The church says, you see, you're into that Jewish, you, what are you doing, man? But those of us who know the what? The remez or the hint of what Yahweh is saying, 
He's saying, I'm willing to give you the knowledge to fill your vessel, even as the knowledge of Yahweh will fill the earth in that day. Hey! In what day? In the day when the lion lies down with the lamb. In the day when the ox and the calf and the tiger and the lion feed together. In that day. In that day when a little child will lead them. Now, do you think the children that Yahweh will allow to lead this restoration and renewal and cleansing in the kingdom will be led by antinomians or by those who obey, honor, and observe the Torah? It is those who obey, honor, and observe the Torah that will be given the privilege of leading these animals to deliverance and rescue somebody. A little child shall lead them. And not an antinomian child, but a child who honors all of his father's commands. Yeah. In the Peshat, this has no meaning. It's a waste of time. I could be talking about the blood of Yeshua. I could be talking about the cru La Cruz del Calvario. <laughs> well, you don't need me for that. You can just go back to the old Sunday place and hear that. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Yep. <laughs> yep. Porque yo tú no, porque yo tú no precado a la cruz de Calvario en Jerusalén. ¿Por qué, rabino? <laughs> because you've got one of those places on every corner. Yeah. When they start teaching you that that shatnes, the the hook of shatnes is grace, and that was the grace that Yeshua manifested when he walked the earth. You know, Yeshua never mixed wool and linen. Do you know that? Do you know his tunics were 100% either or? Amen. Did you know that? He kept it all. He kept the whole Torah or he couldn't have been our savior. Yeah. If Yeshua would have violated Chotinus and Yeshua is going to be doing the teaching in the kingdom and the other children are going to lead the animals into deliverance, that's you. But he will not allow you to teach the Torah if you're not living it now and asking for the understanding now. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. It's up to what you would teach. Yeah. Amen. If you don't understand something, don't call it Jewish legalism. Say, okay, Father, I may not be grabbing this thing on the Peshat, but I'm, I'm ready to go into the remnant, so the hint. What's the hint? I'm just going to be led by the Ruach. I'm going to be led by the, go with me to Colossians 2.16. Come on now. Colossians, that's the introduction to this afternoon's message. Hallelujah. <laughs> Colossians. Colossians. 216. Let no one judge you in what you eat or drink or respecting a, a moed or Rosh Chodesh or Shabbat, which are shadows of going under the law where you need deliverance from Jewish legalism. <laughs> Rosh Chodesh, Shabbat, Moadim, Shatnets, the purity laws of Shatnets are all shadows of being back, back, back under the law. No, it doesn't say. They're shadows of what is to come. Shatnets is a glimpse into the future. It's a glimpse into the kingdom. It's a glimpse into the millennium. Somebody look with me now today, right in the millennium, somebody, and give him praise in the house of God. Look with me through this hook into that thing which is to come. What thing? The day when Yahweh will allow you to teach and lead animals away from death and destruction and shearing and bloodshedding and turn carnivores into herb avor. Come on. What a privilege. What a privilege to understand Torah. How blessed. How blessed. How blessed. Animals will be elevated. Don't miss this now. Don't miss this. Animals will be elevated to human status in terms of morality as humans are elevated to angelic status. See, I'm, you and I are not going to be human beings in the, in the Akiv Lavo. Turn your neighbor and say, you're not going to be a human being. You're not going to be a human being. Let's try that again. You are not going to be a human being. I'll be your neighbor. Well, Rabbi, now, now you're taking us outside of the word. Show that to me in the word. If the animals are going to be elevated to human status, 
in terms of having a, a free will of conscious morality to choose good and evil, and they're going to need instruction from us to choose good. How are we going to instruct them if we think that the instruction manual for the kingdom is done away with? Are you with me? Yes. Are we on? Yes. We've been on. Yes. Go with me to Matichiamu. Matichiamu. Which means Yahweh is my gift. Matan. Matana. Yahweh is my gift. Speaking of gifts, here comes another cup. <laughs> this is a cup of things to come. Matichiamu. Thank you. Mati Jahu. Don't worry, Charles, she's been doing this. She's still faithful. She's been doing this for a long time. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Mati Jahu 2229. Mati Jahu 2229. Yeshua answered the church and said, You go astray. Who was the church in those days? The, the Prushim, the Pharisees. Thought they had everything and they had nothing. <laughs> Hello? The Kirchi Pharisees. He says, you go astray. That's the problem with our brothers and sisters. They've gone astray. They're not bad people. They've just gone astray. Not knowing the scriptures. They don't know yet. They don't know the scriptures. They don't know Why? Because they've been taught that half the scriptures are in invalid. <laughs> what does it mean to be invalid? Invalid. If you read half, if you read that, if you believe that half of the scriptures are in invalidated, that means they're not valid. Right. If you believe the Torah is designed to bring you back under the Torah, as opposed to propel you into kingdom living, you're not going to adopt it, are you? No. Yeah. How many are enjoying today? Yeah. How many are happy for the long services in Miami Beach? Yeah. How, many are happy for, how many are no longer complaining about the six-hour services in Miami Beach? Because <laughs> if you complain now, you're not going to like the millennium, because the millennium is going to last right into eternity. And in eternity, there's no clock. In the kingdom to come, there's no clock. I may just keep you late o'clock to prepare you for the kingdom. Because in the kingdom, there's no clock. Don't say kill the clock, please. No. Yeah. No. Don't check out I like the long service. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. We can work eight-hour days for Lucifer, but we can't, we, we can't sit five hours for the glory of Yahweh. Yom Shekalo Shabbat. And if I've got arthritis and bad joints, and a whole bunch of other problems that if I can stand, you can sit. Yes. Turn your neighbor and say, I can stand his sitting and he can stand my standing. Something like that. What? Baruch Hashem Jewish people need a sense of humor, trust me. It's very difficult to be Jewish in this world. Tell me. Trust me. Our sense of humor has saved us many times. We laugh in the face of, face of disaster and death and persecution. Matijahu 22, 29. Yeshua said, you're going astray because you don't know the scriptures or the power of Elohim. For in the resurrection, when, what does a resurrection a prelude to? The Atid Lavo. How do we get into the Atid Lavo? Through the what? Post-tribulation, pre-millennial resurrection of the righteous dead. How do we get into the kingdom to come? After the tribulation, Yeshua rises us, raises us from the dead, and we enter the what? The coming atid lavo, the coming kingdom to come. So the resurrection is the propelling into the actual atid lavo. In the resurrection, and we don't, Yahweh doesn't want us going astray anymore, not knowing the scriptures or his power. There's power in the law of Shatni, Tim. Yeah. Tim, there's yeah. power. <laughs> There's power, wondrous working power, not just in the blood of the Lamb, but in the eternal hook of shotness. Hallelujah. Watch this. In the resurrection, they do not marry. Okay? Marilyn, do it now while you can. <laughs> just do it. Because the resurrection is coming. And in the resurrection, there'll be no Mr. and Mrs. There'll just be children leading lions and snakes, turning them into herbivores. Ted, you know what you're going to be doing in the millennium? You're not going to be driving a truck anymore. Eh? You're, 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 you're not going to be driving an 18 wheeler anymore. You're going to be leading all these carnivores and teach them how to behave themselves and turn them into herbivores. Come on. 
Now look at Ted. Doesn't he look like someone that is ready to turn carnivores into herbivores? Because he's willing to obey the laws of shotnets now, not questioning Yahweh with a legalistic church mindset. Well, and then, what do you mean by this stuff? It's weird. I, what, what's the meaning? Sounds just like meaning, doesn't it? Huh? Ted says, is that going to help get me ready for the kingdom? Give it to me. That should be our attitude toward Torah. Every hoop and mishpat of Torah is to prepare us for the coming kingdom, and our attitude should be, I'll bow Yahweh, give it, just give it to me. Give it to me. Now, seven Ishma. We will hear and we will do. Now, seven Ishma. See, the, 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 the Greco Roman mindset says, I've got to go to a conference. I've got to get a new set of tapes. I've got to be built up in my faith. And, brother, I'm calling you up so you can build me up in my faith. Then you get on the phone, sweetheart, babe, honey, before I go shopping in Publix, I'm just checking in with you so you can build me up in my faith. Build me. So the, 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 the Greco-Roman Western mindset. Whoa! 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 <laughs> says, I can't move until I'm built up in the faith. Faith, brother, faith, faith. The Hebraic mindset says, Yahweh already told me what to do. And while I'm walking with him, he'll add to my faith virtue, and to my virtue knowledge, and to my knowledge patience, and to my patience humility, and to my humility understanding, and to my understanding wisdom. Because I'm walking, and I am an heir of life, so because I'm walking, I'll get more. But if I'm just waiting for a bloating, a, a manifestation of faith bloating, that's as far as you go. And where are the people who are getting spiritually bloated? You know what, let's not even go there. <laughs> let's not go there. Let's not go there. Brian's going, I got too many visitors, don't go there. <laughs> I got too many visitors. <laughs> Baruch Hashem Yahweh. That's okay. The people that Yahweh put here can't leave. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. They cannot leave. Yeah. Nothing I can say can scare them away. Right. Just like the pastor. Just like the churches that come with tears. Thank you. Thank you, Miami Beach. Thank you, Miami Beach. Stay faithful. Stay on. Stay on, Miami Beach. Don't compromise, Miami Beach. Ahava ve'emet. Truth and love. Amen. Not just truth, truth and love. Hallelujah. You stick around here, you'll find that we are friendly and we are a loving Baruch congregation. Hallelujah. Especially after we eat dinner. <laughs> Baruch Hashem <laughs> Let's go back to Monty Jahu 22. Is anyone enjoying? Come on. Yes. I said, is anyone enjoying? Yes. 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 Monty Jahu 22. In the resurrection, in the Mechaye Hamitim, they do not marry, nor are they given in marriage, but are like the messengers of Elohim in heaven. The animals are elevated to us. We are elevated to the messengers. There is no, there is no, there is no marriage. There is no gambling. There is no drinking. There is no fornicating. We are like the immortal angelic beings whose only need is to focus in on Yahweh. Whose only need is to get a glimpse of Yahweh. Whose only purpose is to serve and pay homage to Yahweh. That will be our mission. That will be our destiny. That will be our understanding as we inherit the kingdom of Yahweh, somebody. Yeah. So what we, we were told made no sense. Makes a whole bunch of sense. Because animals won't be killing animals. Animals won't be killing me, but I'll be like Adam and Eve to the animals. Instead of them be, me being threatened by them, I'll have all those pets, and I'll even give them pet names. Like my first father, Adam, gave all the animals pet names. So, brother, don't worry about your chihuahua. Can you imagine somebody getting upset at this message? Saying, well, I, I, I don't receive it. Why? What, what did the rabbi do wrong? Well, I don't receive it. Well, what did he say wrong? He told me. He, I'm going back to my, to my apostate synagogue. You are? Why? He told me that my pet was not redeemed. He told me that my pet was going to hell. I didn't say that, honey. I said, you can't take the current pet. But in the age to come, all the animals are going to come to you and say, what's my name? 
And instead of having one pet, you'll have a host of pets. For Yahweh is Yahweh of hosts. You're happy with one pet in this life. But if Yahweh wants to give you a host of pets, are you going to complain? <laughs> so if you're an animal lover like I am, don't worry. Like your EO said, Yahweh giveth and Yahweh taketh away. If you can't take one pet, how about the ox, the, 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 the cow, the leopard, the lion? 